Good morning. It's good to be with all of you today. Um, good morning. <laughs> Uh, my name is Patty Roswald, if we haven't met, and I'm just here today to do some announcements with you and to, um, to set the stage since Joe is away. So this morning we're going to begin our series for Lent called Through the Valley, which is all about finding God in the difficult places of life. So Joe is on vacation this week, but while he was away, unfortunately, he had a medical emergency with his eye. And he had surgery, and he's doing well. Um, Joe and Kate will keep us updated as they're able, but they do appreciate all of our prayers and ask for some space for Joe to rest and heal until, um, until he's back. And they will keep us updated on how he's doing and the progress. If you would like to be added to our prayer chain email list, just send an email to the church office, and Lisa, our office manager, will be happy to add you to that list. So today, while Joe is away, we're so happy to welcome Reverend Dr. Rich Hendrickson, who's with us today. Um, Rich is a retired United Methodist elder living in Moorestown, New Jersey, with his wife, Reverend Dr. Gina H Hendrickson, who is the senior pastor of the First Methodist Church of Moorestown. And he's also father to adult twin daughters, Krista and Rebecca, and Papa to his grandchildren, Abby and Peter. I'm glad you wanted to share about your family with us. That's so nice. So, so thanks, and uh, Rich will be preaching with us later on. If you're joining us in person today, please take a minute to check in on Facebook. If you're online, take a moment to share the stream. If you're here in the room, the ushers will come around in just a moment with red attendance pads. We hope you'll let us know that you've been here. And if you are visiting, share your contact information so we can let you know what's going on here at church. If you are online with us today, you can do the same at medfordumc.org slash Sunday. And there you can record your attendance and also find other ways to connect with us. There's a link to this week's announcements, links to make a gift or don't download our app, our social media, and lots more. If you're in the room, on the back of the seat in front of you, you can also see a code on a card that you can scan to get the, all this information as well. So I just have a couple of announcements I'd like to share. Um, today we want to celebrate the collection for the Super Bowl of Caring last week. And we were able to collect almost $1,500 towards that mission. And that money is going to our partner, Turning Point Food Pantry in Trenton. So thanks to everyone who supported this ministry. We also have the ongoing collection of personal care items for men, women, and children in shelters through the IHOC Adopt-A-Box program. There's information on that link. You can go to medfordumc.org and get more information. And there's also information about the collection out in the narthex. So as you leave today, you can get more information about that. And Wayne is going to share with us in a few moments a video announcement from Joe and Kate about the Facebook Live donations that they're going to be doing during Lent. So I'm going to invite Wayne to share that video with us. for United Methodist Church. Uh, we're on vacation this morning, but we wanted to let you know about uh, one of the ways that we're going to be celebrating Lent this year, and we hope that you'll join us for it. So, Kate, do you want to talk about what we're going to be doing? Yes, yeah, so we gave this announcement last week for those of you who are here, um, but Lent is a time when we are asked to consider maybe the ways in which our lives aren't perfect, the ways in which they're difficult, the ways in which we may not be perfect, the world around us, our families, our communities might not be perfect. And it's an opportunity for us to invite God into those spaces with us. Um, and we know that life is hard for a lot of people right now. And so we wanted to create space for us to get some centering throughout our day and just to provide an opportunity to gather together. So on Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., we are going to come to you from our home live on Facebook Live. 
and we're going to gather for a time of 15 or 20 minutes of uh, morning meditation, devotion, prayer. Uh, we'll accept prayer requests from you if you're on live with us and tuning in live, or you can tune in later in the day. But we're going to be going through this book uh, that we found by Kate Bowler called Have a Beautiful, Terrible Day. And we, um, as we look through it, there are lots of daily meditations uh, throughout all of Lent that help us uh, celebrate what's beautiful and hold what's hard. And so we hope that you will join us as we go through those together. You can buy the book if you'd like to join in that way, or you can just tune in live uh, with us Monday through Friday. So we hope to see you there. Thanks for being with us this morning, and uh, we'll see you again next week. God bless you. Bye. So I just want to let you know that there are a few copies of the devotional in the Narthex. The cost is $18. Uh, if you would like to take one from there and, and make a donation, uh, you, can, you can do that. So, And then I know it's also available on Amazon if they do um, sell out before you get there. So um, that's all the announcements I have for today. And I'm going to invite Chris to begin the call to worship. Good morning. Please rise as you are able for the call to worship. God, where are you? Where are you in this world of violence? God, why do those who cause harm seem to be comforted and not punished? God, even though we may not understand, we rest on our faith and trust you that you remember us. We rejoice with all in our time, giving you praise in the air of our lives. Amen. be seated. Please join in the opening prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day and for bringing us together in the community of faith. 
In the midst of our joys and praises, we acknowledge the burdens of our hearts. When it feels like the world is against us and our efforts seem in vain, we cry out to you, God, please answer us. Help us remember that you are present, even in the silence. May this time of worship be a space where we can pour out our hearts to you honestly. Fill our spirits with hope, love, healing, and direction. We pray in the name of Jesus, our source of comfort and strength. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Um, you can um, greet your, your um, fellow worshipers in any way that you feel comfortable this morning. Today's scripture comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 13, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible, beginning with verse 1. How long will you forget me, Lord, forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I be left to my own wits, agony filling my heart? Daily? How long will my enemy keep defeating me? Look at me. Answer me, Lord my God. Restore sight to my eyes, otherwise I'll sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I won. My foes will rejoice over my downfall. But I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. Yes, I will sing to the Lord because he has been good to me. The word of God to the people of God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 
It's uh, good to be with you this morning. Uh, I was saddened to hear the news about Pastor Joe, but I thank him. Uh, I was already scheduled to be here and, and to share uh, this time with you this morning and, and, to, and to preach the word. So I also want to thank all of those that have been so warm and welcoming, welcoming me this morning and um, have done so much work in making sure that everything uh, was ready to go for worship today. I also want to share, I have a little history here at um, Medford Church. Uh, 28 years ago, I, I went through my ordination interviews right here. Uh, and this, in fact, I was, would sit right in the back pew on this side, waiting to be called to the next set of interviews. And uh, they're fond memories because I passed. <laughs> and uh, and I, I've been retired now for a year and a half, so they're really fond memories. Uh, at this at this point. But again, uh, it is good to be with you this morning. We are beginning this journey through this wonderful season of Lent. Um, Lent is a time for self-reflection. It's a time for maybe to engage or re-engage spiritual practices and spiritual disciplines, things like daily prayer and daily scripture reading, uh, fasting, meditation, There's a lot of ways that we can uh, embrace the season of Lent and draw closer uh, to God. Uh, It's a wonderful 40 days uh, of, uh, again, intentional work on our spiritual health and well-being. Our first stop um, in worship is Psalm 13. And uh, Psalm 13 was written by David. And uh, as you open the the Bible, uh, some of them will have as a caption to Psalm 13, written for the director of music. So that tells us that not only was Psalm 13 a a personal uh, pouring out of uh, emotions and thoughts by David, it was also to be meant to be used uh, in worship uh, by the people of God. But I want us to listen again to what David has to say. And one of the themes for this Lenten season through the valley is this idea of lament. So listen to all of the, the ways that David is lamenting to God as you hear this psalm again. How long will you for, forget me, Lord? Forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I be left to my own wit's agony, agony filling my heart? Daily? How long will my enemy keep defeating me? Look at me, O God. Answer me, Lord. Restore sight to my eyes. Otherwise, I'll sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I've won. My foes will rejoice over my downfall. But I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. Yes, I will sing to the Lord because God has been good to me. Psalm 13, friends, is a psalm of lament. And I think lament isn't a word or concept that is all that familiar uh, or um, welcomed by us today, if I can put it that way. I have found that we are a culture that is more comfortable singing don't worry, be happy, than crying out in lament. So I want to take a minute to kind of define what a lament is so that when I use the word, we we all kind of have a working uh, out of the same mindset when we consider what this word and the importance of it for us this morning. A lament is a prayer expressing sorrow, pain, or confusion. Let me say that again. A lament is a prayer expressing sorrow, pain, or confusion. And a lament is much deeper than simply being unhappy or sad. Good example, uh, I might be sad that I didn't get the Christmas gift I wanted, right? But I would lament over all of the people and families and children that wake up every day, not only with no gifts, but with no home and no shelter and no food and no way of climbing out of that cycle of poverty. 
See the difference in the two things. Lament is so much deeper than being simply being sad or unhappy. And lament is important. It's important for us during the season of Lent. I want to say it's important to us as disciples of Jesus Christ all the time. One biblical scholar I read explained the importance of Lent this way, and I really, I really like this um, uh, description. He wrote, The world in which we live is broken, and in some way or another we experience that brokenness every day. On the news we see wars, stories of poverty and neglect, ongoing vicious political discourse, gun violence in our neighborhoods and schools, and also things like illness and broken relationships, substance abuse, and the list goes on and on. And I don't know about you, but when I experience the brokenness of this world, often I can, I can just be devastated by it, especially those things that I don't feel I can do anything about. And I feel defeated, and I'm exhausted and full of dread and hopelessness, and sometimes I just don't even know what to pray for because the feeling of lament is so strong. Lament, though, I believe, gives us the words those, to those feelings and to those emotions. Lament gives the, the words to what we're feeling so that we can bring those words and place them in God's throne of grace. I might not know what to pray for, but if I use the laments of Scripture... God will give me words to articulate my emotions. To so that, and I say thank God for the Psalms, because almost a third of the Psalms are Psalms of Lament. And oh yeah, by the way, there's an entire book of the Bible called Lamentations. You can imagine what that's full of. Lament after lament. Um, and what I have found, again, over the years is if we read the book of Lamentations, if we, if we read the, the Psalms of Lament, we will not be without words to, to offer up to God. We, we will be able to articulate the depths of our emotions. And I believe that God wants to, wants to hear, wants to... to um, hear our pain, wants to hear our anguish, wants to hear our, our devastation and our hopelessness. God wants us to lament. Now, God doesn't want us to have reason for lament, but when that happens, God wants us to bring those to Him. And I, again, I want to be clear, lament is not simply a God-approved means of grumbling. Um... Lord knows we know how to do that already. Lament is, is deeper. And, and there's some things that happen when we lament. And I want to name a few of those for us this morning. Firstly, I, I believe that in lament, we, we recognize God's wisdom. And, and at the same time, we, we recognize our finiteness. Sorrow and hopelessness are disorienting at, at best. We don't come out of a season of grief feeling whole, capable, wise. Looking to God in our pain reminds us of our limits, but also reminds us of the endless scope of God's knowledge, God's wisdom, God's love and care for each and every one of us. So when we lament, we recognize God's wisdom and knowledge. We also learn, I believe, to trust in God. In fact, I would go so strong as to say lament is a direct expression of our trust in God. And I found that the more that I trust God with my sadness, the more I'm apt to trust God with everything and everyone in my life. And finally, in lament, we understand more of God's grace and love. In our deepest, darkest, darkest moments, we cry out to the Lord and we bring to God nothing but our need. As God meets us, we see and are reminded that God is indeed loving and gracious. Again, in, in Psalm 13, David begins the lament by crying out, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? 
But before he ends, Psalm 13, David also declares, God, I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. I believe that when David began Psalm 13 and began to lament to God, it reminded him of all the ways that God has been good to him and God's faithfulness to all generations. There's movement in Psalm 13 from lament to praise to uh, assurance that God will be there. Lament shapes us and, and deepens our relationship with God. But, I, but there are also some, what I like to call, side effects when we lament. Positive impacts on our lives as disciples of Jesus Christ. Here's what I have found as I bring my pain and discomfort and grief, and grief even when I bring my hopelessness to God. The first thing I have found is that I become a better neighbor. When we bring our grief to the Lord, we become more aware of the grief in other people's lives. We are more likely to listen to our loved ones and neighbors with empathy and kindness and love when they experience the brokenness of the world because we have been there and we have done that. Just a quick side note. I know all of you know this, but I want to make sure we're reminded When someone else that you love or that you know is going through a tough time, for whatever the reason might be, please, please, somebody say please, please, do not look them in the eye and say, I know exactly how you feel. Or I know exactly what you're going through. Instead, look at them and say, I'm so sorry. What can I do to help? Can I pray for you? Lamenting makes us better neighbors. Lamenting also brings us uh, to a place where we are, we walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Luke 19, Jesus, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. And he said, if you, even you, had known this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. Jesus' ministry and life was full of reasons of lament. In Mark 14, we read that Jesus and the disciples go to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to deeply be distressed and troubled. And he says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he falls to the ground and prays, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Friends, those are deep laments on the lips of Jesus. And perhaps the most powerful is when he's hanging from the cross and he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Lament on the heart and the lips of Jesus. Powerful moments for us to remember that it opens up this this doorway between us and and God. So here's a few practical steps for us to be able to experience the power of lament this Lenten season and beyond. First thing is, read the book of Lamentations. Google Psalms of Lament and then read those psalms as part of your devotional life this Lenten season. Learn the the words and the phrases and the prayers so that when you have feelings of lament, you can use the words that God has provided for us to bring them to God's throne of grace. Also, though, bring your complaints before God. Do not be afraid to complain to God. You might be thinking, can I really talk to God that way? Am I really allowed to talk to God like that? It seems so disrespectful. Friends, we are not only allowed to talk to God this way, but I believe it's, it's 
God wants us to be honest and to bring the depths of our emotions to God no matter what. Now, to be sure, there are some ungodly ways to complain. But when we complain in a godly way, godly complaint identifies conditions or events in the world or in our lives, many of which we can't do anything about, and it brings them to God and it says, God, are you seeing this? God, do you, do you see what's going on in Gaza right now? God, do you, do you, did you see what happened in, in Israel? God, do you see the number of children that are dying around the world for preventable diseases and preventable things like gun violence and, and malnutrition and, and poor health? Friends, this kind of sharp, acute cry is all throughout the book of Lamentations, all throughout the Psalms. It's us being honest to God with just how deep we are lamenting what's happening in the world around us. David wrote, How long, O God, will you forget me? Forever? After we bring our complaints to God, though, we can also ask boldly for God to intervene. Our bold requests are anchored in God's character. We might say something like, God, the the war in Ukraine seems to be going on forever. That's the complaint part. And then the, the intervention part is, God, do something about it. Deliver the people from bloodshed and destruction. Warm the hearts of those that, that, that make the decision so that war might end and peace prevail. We ask God to intervene because God is just and He is loving and faithful and because He keeps His promises. This next sentence is underlined and in bold and italic, so I have to say it twice. Healthy lament always moves to intercession rather than being stuck in complaining. Healthy lament always moves to intercession instead of being stuck in complaining. So after we complain, after we ask God to intervene, then we can choose to trust that God will hear us and answer our lament. After we complain, we turn to hope. If we know the promises of God, and if God always keeps His promises, we can trust Him. Again, David wrote this by the time the end of Psalm 13 came. He says, I trust in your faithful love, O God. My heart rejoices in your salvation. Godly lament produces the fruit of hope. A future in which lament will have no place. No reason. Friends, our greatest hope in every lament ultimately lies in the hope that one day it will be no more. The reason for lament will be no more. God wrote about that day in in the book of Revelation when he says that, that there'll be a day when I wipe away every tear from your eyes. Death will be no more. There shall be no more mourning or crying or pain. All the former things have passed away. There will be a day when the reason for lament will be no more. But in the meantime, I want to encourage each and every one of us to embrace lament this Lenten season. To not to be afraid to cry out to the Lord with the depths of our being. Don't be afraid to be honest with God no matter what. Because the truth of the matter is, God already knows what's going on in our lives, in our hearts, in our souls. We might as well be honest and articulate that to God. But also, don't be afraid to move from lament. Don't get stuck in the complaint. But also move to intercession asking God to intervene, and then ultimately move to hope. Go from lament to intercession to hope. Because as we do so, we can be reminded that God knows 
that God cares and that God is eager for us to trust Him in everything, especially in our sorrow. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this invitation to not hold back, to express our anger in the world around us, if, if that's what we're feeling, to articulate our, our, our deep pain and, and sorrow and frustration and whatever it is that we, we feel when we look around at this world in which we live, when we look into the lives of those that we love, and and perhaps even into our own life. God, you are a God that can take it and will not turn us away when we bring our complaints. God, hear our prayers. Hear our laments. We trust in you, and we trust that you always have what's best for us in your heart and in your mind. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. If the walls of this worship space could talk, what stories they could tell. Times of joy and laughter as over the years, people have gathered here to celebrate celebrate Christmas and Easter, times when families come together for a wedding, a baptism, a special homecoming. These walls could also tell stories of tears and deep sadness, funerals of loved ones, the quiet prayers of a broken heart or a troubled soul. 
These walls could share how people found comfort and solace here in this space, surrounded by a caring community and the Spirit of God. You have your own stories of joy and heartaches that you've experienced in this room, this holy ground. When you give of your time, your talent, and your financial support, you aren't just giving to a building, but to a community, a community of Christ followers who share this space with with the saints who have gone before us, and a space we will pass on to generations not yet born. To make a gift to support our ministry, you can drop a check in the offering basket or the plate, give online at medfordumc.org slash give, through the app, or by mail. However you choose to give, we thank you for these gifts and all the ways that you support Medford United Methodist Church. be seated. Please join in the prayer of thanksgiving. 
Living God, we thank and praise you for your presence with us as individuals and together as your church. Receive these offerings as an expression of our gratitude and our devotion to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's bow our heads and open our hearts to the Lord. God, we come with prayers of thanksgiving and and gratitude for our time together this morning. I thank you for this uh, community of faith, the the impact it, it makes on the lives of those who come through its doors, the impact it makes into the community, and, and yes, oh God, literally around the world. Thank you for its long uh, history of being a good and, and faithful congregation uh, following Jesus wherever you lead. God, we thank you for um, drawing us together as brothers and sisters in Christ so that we may experience the the, the presence of your Holy Spirit as we gather in this space, but also as we prepare ourselves to go back out into the world, accompanied and, and led and guided by that same Spirit. May your Spirit equip us and empower us to bring the good news of Jesus to, to all whom we meet and to everywhere and every situation we go. And God, as we've already mentioned this morning, Our world is in need of healing, wholeness. Our our world is in need of of your love and and action and your mighty hand to move in a way that um, will open hearts and lives to your will and to your desire for us as a people, as a nation, and as as a world. God, you know all the places that are broken. And you know how, how they're broken and how deep that brokenness goes. We look at a, a, a place like the Middle East with Israel and Palestinians and terrorist organizations. And, and, and yet we know from Scripture that fighting over this land has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. But we still pray, O oh God, with hope. Hope that you will indeed act in a way that will bring peace. And we dare pray, O oh God, that, that you would use us where you see fit to be instruments of both your peace and your grace. So God, we pause for just a moment now in silence so that each and every one of us can bring our prayers of thanksgiving, of praise, of lament, Whatever is going on in our lives and on our hearts, we can bring them to you and place them at your throne of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, God, we do uh, lift up Kate and Joe to you, Joe, for healing, uh, quick and complete uh, healing. Um, and prayers for Kate as she cares for Joe in this time. And prayers that this would be a season for them to um, feel uh, the love and the family of this congregation pouring out prayers um, and acts of kindness in all kinds of different ways. Lord, again, thank you for this time together. 
Uh, we lift up these prayers and, and all of our prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Receive the blessing. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.